So how do we actually find an inverse function? So if we start with f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, this is a function that is 1 to 1 with its greatest possible domain because ultimately it is just a diagonal straight line. Okay, So the fact is that this is a 1 to 1 graph, Okay, so I should be able to find the inverse function. So how it works is you first of all write it as y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, so replace the f of x with y. That's step one. Step two is to swap the x's and y's. Okay, so we swap x's and y's. So any x's that turn up become y's, any y's become x's. So we would have x equals 2y plus 3. Our next step is to make y the subject. So rearrange it to get y equals. So I'm going to subtract 3 and then divide both sides by 2. And I would get y equals a half x minus 3. OK? So, once you're there, you can then replace the y with f minus 1 of x. And that is your inverse function. OK? That's how you do it. So it goes through the process of writing it as y equals, swap the x's and y's, rearrange to make y the subject, and then replace the y with f minus 1x. So if I just multiply that through, OK, that's, that would be the equation that I've got. So let's draw it. So we've got y is equal to our um, 2x plus 3, which would be this. So going through 3, and what would that point be? That would be minus 3 halves. OK? So then half x minus 3 halves, that would go through minus 3 halves. Um, you know, let's start again with this. Let's make it a little bit more accurate. y equals 2x plus 3. There's 3. There's minus 3 halves. OK? Right. Now, the y equals a half x minus 3 halves. There's your minus 3 halves. OK? And then, where is it going to go through the x-axis? Well, that would be when x is 3. So it would go through 3 on the x-axis. So you would get a line that looks like this. So what do we have? Well, we actually have two straight-line graphs and how are they connected? Well, you can see that it's 3, 3, minus 3 halves, minus 3 halves. And actually, oh, I didn't draw that very well. Actually, what you have is a black line and a red line that are reflections of one another in the line y equals x. This is a consequence of finding an inverse function. So f of x and the inverse function of f um, are reflections of one another in the line y equals x. Okay, And this is the general case for all functions and their inverses. So this allows you to then sketch an inverse function uh, knowing what the original function looked like, or vice versa, potentially.